everyone, James back here. And today, I have some VGC battles from the Nugget Bridge Major. If you guys don't know, the Nugget Bridge Major is pretty much one of the biggest online VGC Pokemon tournaments ever in history. And it's currently going on, and this is my round 2 match, I believe. The Nugget Bridge Major is a best of 3 VGC tournament. Um, there's Swiss rounds, um, X2s will cut while... If you go below, you will now top cut. This was round two, and let me just say, these games were intense that I had with my opponent. Anyway, so that, let's just go right into it. Wasn't sure about showing my major matches just because the team I was going to use at the regionals, but I'm having second doubts about it, so I leave with Kangaskhan and Bishop against my opponents, um, Thunderous and Farafone. I was really scared of a Mawile lead. But he brings Farafone and Fundress, which is fine. He's going to withdraw the Farafone right away, probably fearing the low kick. He's going to actually go into his Blaze again, who I wasn't really thinking he would bring in here, but it does make sense. And Blaze can actually did a pretty big amount to my team. I'm going to Mega Evolve with Kangaskhan here to get that Mega Evolution and go for the Fake Out onto the Thunderous, just because I do not want Thunderous around. I know that the Thunderous is the big threat to my team. And I actually go for the knockoff onto the Thunderous, trying to get rid of it, just so I have uh, my Suicune in the back who can destroy this team. And I do knock off and get the Citrus Berry, which is useful information in a best of three format. He's actually going to bring out Farafor in here, which I'm fine with since Farafor is not really a very heavy offensive pressure right now. I'm going to withdraw Bisharp into Togekiss, just because... I can redirect his fighting type attacks from Kangaskhan, which is pretty useful. He's going to Mega Evolve with his Blaziken, which was interesting. I did not expect Mega Blaziken. And I just go for the return on Blaziken in case he didn't go for Protect. I also didn't want to attack the Farafhorn, so that's my best play. It went into the uh, red. He's actually going to go for the Flare Blitz onto my Bisharp in case I did switch out, which was really nice. He even snags a Burn, but then I reveal my Lumberry on Togekiss. He's going to take the recoil and actually faint to the recoil. So that turn couldn't have gone any better for me as I knock out his Mega. He's going to go for Leech Seed with his Farafarn onto my Kangaskhan. Which I'm fine with because I can keep switching out. You can't switch out. And I have a Togekiss who carries Heat Wave. So this Farafarn is going down no problem. He reveals his last Pokemon is my Low Tick, however. And right here, I feel like I'm just going to set a Power Punch. I... Don't think I can really choke this game around, especially with Heat Wave Togekiss, so I might as well just go for damage right here. I'm gonna go for that Heat Wave, which is a 4 times super effective move on for Rothorn. It's not Stab, however, which doesn't KO, but it does pick up the burn off for Rothorn, which is really great, because now I know that that for Rothorn is not Lumberry, so it's probably Leftovers or Rocky Helmet. As he reveals the Iron Head and goes for it onto the Togekiss, getting Skull damage on my Kangaskhan as well. Which again, I'm fine with because right here, he's getting some Leech Seed recovery, but really that um, Heat Wave just did as much damage as possible. That Burn is also going to negate the Leech Seed, so that is really nice. And I know it's my low tick's not Scar, so I can bring out Bishop, go for a knockoff onto Farofran, returning my low tick for the game. As this Farofran is going to make a last attempt, go for that Protect, just to drain my Kangaskhan's health with Leech Seed. However, I just go for the return onto my low tick, I mean I had no reason not to at this point and go for the knockoff onto the Farafarn because there's really no point anymore. As Kangaskhan's health is going to be drained by Leech Seed, however, he's going to be taking burn damage and knockoff will still be a KO on Farafarn at this range. So pretty much, pretty fantastic game I thought. I was not expecting Mega Blaziken, I was definitely expecting Mawal to be brought in. However, it really just came down to... Um, KOing the threat, and that Thunderous was the big threat to the Suicune I had in the back, since my Suicune can actually deal with Farofforn with a hidden power. So that's why I decided to double attack the Thunderous. Really wasn't worried about uh, Farofforn in the first turn. I mean, the worst it could have done was get a crit gyro ball onto my Kangaskhan, or Leech Seed, which I really didn't mind, because as long as I had Togekiss in the back, I could always just Heat Wave. So anyway, this was a best of three set, and we will be going on into game two. Okay, game two, I decide that 
My leads were perfect. The Pokemon in the back were okay for this team. I might as well bring it again. However, my opponent is going to switch it up. He's actually going to bring both his Megas, Mawile and Blaziken. Kind of interesting. However, Blaziken is completely viable without a Mega Evolution. So, that's fine by me. He also decides to bring his Landorus instead of my Lotic. Because my Lotic really didn't help him in the last game. And Landorus offers the Intimidate um, factor, which isn't good for the Bishop. Because Bishop gets to fight. However, it is going to help him with the Kangaskhan. So, let's get into this right away. I knew Bishop would probably be a key factor. I knew he would probably bring Landers instead of Milotic this time. And I know Bishop's the key. So, I'm going to lead again with Kangaskhan Bishop. Just a very offensive lead that just pressures my opponent right away. As my opponent actually leads um, Blaziken and Thunderous, which is not the best ideal lead for me. But, I know what to do. He's actually going to withdraw his Funders, go into his Landers, get that Intimidate off onto my Kangaskhan, but give my Bishop the Defiant Boost, which is going to raise his attack by two levels. So now I'm a plus one Bishop. Kangaskhan is going to Mega Evolve here. And to be honest, I'm fine with getting a plus one. Because right now, here is what I decided to do. His Blaziken did go for the Protect and what I did, all I did was fake out the Blaziken and go for the knockoff onto the Thunder slot. Bad play for my opponent because obviously he switched into the knockoff, gave me the Defiant Boost, and his Landers is gone. We do reveal Choice Scarf, which is great in case I lose this battle. We move on to Game 3. I know his Landers is Choice Scarf. And his Blaziken is getting that Speed Boost, but I am fine with that turn. Now here I'm thinking, he's probably going to target Bishop because Bishop's a real big threat to his team. He's going to go for the Thunder Wave into Kangaskhan, which does make sense. Because it's going to slow it down. He's probably going to go for the Fire Attack move onto my Bishop. However, I go for the Return to Blaziken. And surprisingly enough, my Kangaskhan is still faster than his Blaziken at a plus one speed. So that is incredible. He did target the Bishop slot, and now he's at plus two. However, he's in Sucker Punch range now from my Bishop. And that's really ideal because... That Blaziken is going to be going down to the Sucker Punch. He's going to go for Thunder Wave, trying to get the Parahax on his side. Not going to work as I do get to knock out Blaziken. And this is really great right now because I'm up for 2 However, both my Pokemon are paralyzed. I go for the Power Punch play here just because I do want to negate that Intimidate the Landers came in. And I pretty much assumed if he's not Mega Balling with Blaziken, he probably brought Mawile in the back. And that's fine by me. He's going to bring out his Mawile. Which is really good right here because that's another Intimidate, which means Kangaskhan's at neutral. However, Bishop is at plus two now thanks to that Define ability. Define is really great against these teams that like to use Intimidate as defensive synergy. However, Define will ignore that. He's going to Mega Ball with Mawa, go on the offensive. There's no reason to keep regular Mawa run. However, Bishop is paralyzed. I did go for the Protect with my Bishop. He is going to go for the Thunderbolt and gets a critical hit, which actually knocks out the Bishop. So, without that crit, I would have survived. However, now it's actually looking pretty dangerous. He goes for the player off onto my Kangaskhan. But I do get that return off onto the Thunderous. Which I know won't Oko, but I need as much damage as I can onto this Thunderous. So, my Suicune can come in and do a lot of damage to this Mawile. As you can see, that return did a lot of damage. I'm going to bring out the Suicune, which is really strong here because it's holding a Choice Specs. And he is going to go for the Thunder Wave again to Suicune. Trying to avoid the Sucker Punch, which I am completely fine with. As he goes for the, his own Sucker Punch onto my Kangaskhan, I pretty much assumed that's what he was going to do. Sucker Punch my Kangaskhan, but I didn't want to switch out and take a play rough with another Pokemon. I'm going to go for the Skull, targeting down the Thunders. Because Thunderous is really the biggest threat to my team, especially if it carries Swagger. I'm going to bring out Togekiss now, and right here, I go for the Heat Wave. I mean, really I could have gone for Air Slash, but I'd rather just get damage onto his Mawile. And he goes for the Iron Head onto my Togekiss. Going to pick up the Knockout, but as long as I can connect the Scald, I know I'm going to win this game. However, Suicune gets fully paralyzed. And now, it's really scary now because... Uh, if I get penalized one more time, this game is over. Play rough happens. I do get to skull it off, however, and this does not KO. And I'm like, wow, that's a bulky Mawa. He goes for another play rough, but he uh, uh, misses his attack. 
and I'm able to get the skull off, which is able to KO his mobile and seal up the game. So that was an intense game. Definitely, uh, luck was kind of making this game more difficult. You guys, you guys saw by the paralysis on my bishop earlier on. You guys saw that Thunder's got a critical hit Thunderbolt, which definitely made it more difficult. That Thunder Ray paralysis on Suicune, just really making it close games. But finally, I got some RNG, and his play rough missed, and that was just incredible. Anyway, this game, real, this set was really fun. It was really enjoyable. I thought that. I was screwed once I realized Skull didn't KO, but if I knew that if I lost, which I thought I did, I did know his Mawa was very specially bulky because I know Skull does so much to Mega Mawa with the choice specs item. He usually does like 60 to 70 percent, I want to say, but I could be wrong. It could do more. It depends on the Mawa set, I guess. So I was kind of guessing it would be Ray's Mawa. And I hope you guys enjoyed this VGC episode, Nugget Bridge Major Tournament, definitely one of the biggest tournaments. Unfortunately, I did not top cut this tournament, and I'm not going to explain why. It wasn't that I lost, it was just some kind of glitch that happened in the tournament. But I am fine with that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this VGC episode. Be sure to give a like if you guys did, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.